thing was that. Um, <laughs> good evening and good day wherever you are in the world joining us. My name is Siobhan Sutton. I am a, an alumna of the illustrious class of 1999. It is my pleasure to moderate tonight's conversation with my wonderful, wonderful guests and fellow alumni. Um, we'll start with a little bit of a video preview and then dive right in. It was a time of massive social change. The Vietnam War was in full swing, and women, African Americans, and other marginalized citizens <clears throat> continued their fight for equality. Amid this significant shift, 21 young women joined Petty's student body. 50 years later, Petty's campus is bustling with female students, faculty, and staff. But there is a storied journey to where we are today. Petty changed its student composition three times throughout its 156-year history. By 1890, the school was thriving as a co-educational institution. But by 1907, as co-educational boarding schools were passing out of vogue, the trustees were persuaded to change the school's admissions policy, and Petty became an all-boys school. Decades later, at a time of evolving social norms and increasing economic pressures, Petty's trustees voted to accept female day students for the fall term. The return of female students provided a significant boost to the school's theater department. It took a couple of years to enroll enough female athletes to field girls' teams. In February 1973, the school's trustees voted to accept female boarding students that fall. Today, 50% of Petty's teaching staff is female. There has also been one female head of school in Petty history. That's me, Ann Seltzer. I served as the interim head of school for one year following the death of my friend Ed Potter. Today, female students are such an integral part of the Petty community as students, athletes, artists, and school leaders, leaving us to wonder, how did Petty ever exist without girls? Those images left no doubt what we're here to do tonight, and that is to celebrate 50 years of women at Petty. I am so grateful for everyone to be here and would love for our panelists to each introduce themselves, really focused on your name, Petty Year, um, your journey since Petty. Uh, love to start with Susan. Hey, okay. hi everyone. Um, my name is Susan Armenti. And I went to Petty from uh, 1970 to 1973. Can you hear me okay? Because, uh, yes, okay, good. Um, I'm all the way from LA, so it's through my phone. It's a miracle. Um, anyway, um, I was there from 1970 to 1973. And um, so I was in that first class of day students. There were no borders when I was at Petty. Uh, after Petty, I went to Franklin and Marshall College. Uh, I spent my junior year abroad in England. Um, I then worked for an ad agency in Princeton. And then I worked for Vogue magazine. I was the production manager for Vogue. Um, I married someone from Petty. Um, we later divorced, but I did marry someone from Petty. <laughs> um, I then moved to California and I got involved in the entertainment industry and um, was an agent at William Morris and um, did some more writing. And then I kind of transitioned into the real estate business. So um, that's what I've been doing since Petty. Thank and you. it's lovely to be with all of you tonight. Thank you. Heidi? Hi, I'm Heidi Keller Hutchison, I'm part of that first group. Um, I didn't know I was going to Petty until a couple weeks before my senior year. 
my dad uh, was head of the science department at the time, and every year he put my application into the board of trustees. And every year they said, no, thank you, except for the senior year one. So I was kind of surprised, but I was also a little bit annoyed at that decision because it was my senior year and I had gone to school with my friends since elementary school. Uh, luckily for me, Jan Franklin Petrino, who was one of my best friends, was also going. Her dad was the director of studies. So when we got to Petty, um, there were no sports. Um, our gym class was synchronized swimming with Mrs. Roser, and I think we listened to the chicken fat record or something like that. Um, there wasn't a huge program in that end of things, but what I did find by going to Petty was I, I found what I was capable of doing. It stretched me in ways that I was not aware that I could be stretched. So after Putty, I went to the College of Worcester. Mr. Orm thought that that would be a good fit for me because I was a little on the shy side. Um, still don't like talking in front of groups. <laughs> um, and I majored in psychology. I took um, a year off in college. And one of the reasons was I was a little disappointed in the academic experience after having been at Petty. Um, it just didn't feel as robust to me in many ways. Um, so I traveled around Europe with a friend and we worked for an insurance company. Came back, finished up my degree. My dad pointed out to me, you can't do much with a degree in psychology. So I did get certified to teach. So I taught for 35 years, the last half um, eighth grade English. Uh, they seemed to understand me and I understood them. And at this point, I am an adjunct fac faculty with the University of New Hampshire, working with teaching interns, supervising them, and observing them in the classroom. Awesome. And last but not least, Mary, just a little bit about yourself since Petty, your year. Sure. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you, including some of my classmates. Uh, so I'm Mary Stella. I am the class of 75. And I, I started at Petty in the fall of 73. So I am one of the small group of original boarding girls uh, that occupied Avery and Octagon uh, for those two years. Mm -hmm. And since that time, uh, the roots of the education that I had at Petty led me to always doing something related to writing, PR, advertising, marketing. I've, I've bounced around a lot between radio stations and agencies and uh, public relations, some journalism in my background. Uh, but for the last 19 years, uh, I've been living full-time in the fabulous Florida Keys, where I am the director of media and marketing for Dolphin Research Center. We are a nonprofit marine mammal education and research facility. So basically I get to talk and write about dolphins and sea lions and manatees and and our mission for education and conservation. So happy to be here. That's awesome. That's Heidi hinted a bit at the abruptness of the decision to bring women <laughs> into Betty. I would love to jump off at that point. Um, how did you feel to have to switch so abruptly? And Susan, I'll ask you the same question, uh, uh, knowing that you came in the 70, 71 range. How did you feel about switching and what were your first impressions of Petty? Heidi first. Um, I, since I lived on the campus, I was familiar with faculty and the housing and all that. I was apprehensive because somehow, I don't know how we heard about this, but we had heard that some of the males on campus were not exactly thrilled about females coming. They thought we were going to bring down the academic standing of the school. So that made me nervous, but it was also a challenge, so it wasn't all bad. Um, there weren't, in, in our senior class, there were only four females. So I did not have any classes with any other females. It was all males. Um, and that was kind of good in some ways, too, because um, all my friends at that point, for the most part, were, were males. You know, it was like... It opened up a, a whole new world where guys could also be your friends. Um, so that was kind of cool. That's all I can say. Oh, okay. And Susan? Well, my, uh, the decision for me to go to Petty was also very quick. 
although I'd never been on the campus before. I knew nothing really about it except that um, Tom Petrino was a family friend and his father uh, knew that Petty was going co-ed and encouraged my parents to enroll me. So I went over there, uh, like I said, had an interview, got a scholarship job set up and a scholarship set up and um, three weeks later I'm at Petty. And I had no thought that there was going to be any resistance to um, having uh, me and other women at the school. I mean, it was just not not even in my head until I got there. And then I realized, oh, yeah, there are some people here that aren't that pleased with this. And we're sort of just really disrupting things. And um, but, you know, I think once friendships started to blossom between students and there was the greater understanding, the, the thought of us being disruptors went away and we became friends. So... I think that was what happened. But there was there were faculty and students that were not pleased with us being on campus I initially. I definitely intend to jump into that because that, that's a fascinating story to bring up. I want to loop in Mary. Um, you arrived just a little bit later to Petty um, as one of the first female boarders. What was that like? And what were your first impressions of uh, Petty in general, the curriculum? Uh, you know, it was, it, it, first of all, it was definitely a culture shock. So I'm, I'm from the Atlantic City area, and there were uh, a heck of a lot more students at Atlantic City High School my first two years there. So to go there, and, and first of all, I was 15. So going away from home for the first time, um, and, and just briefly, the reason the decision was made for me to go away to prep school my junior year was because at the time, the high school was having a lot of, a lot of problems. And it was the third time that I had to call my parents and say, um, you know, I got mugged and, and I just had a big brawl in, you know, at the end of gym class and fought my way out of it and hyperventilating and, and I'm probably getting suspended from school for fighting. And um, that didn't happen. My dad interceded, but they came to me and they said, what would you think about going away to school? Because you can't concentrate on your education if you have to worry about physically defending yourself. So uh, a, a family friend knew about Petty. Beautiful campus. I remember thinking that this is just so gorgeous, but I don't know that I really thought too much about what it was going to be like to go to a school that had the entire enrollment was the equivalent of the senior class of the high school that I came from and that we were going to be in such a minority. I will say that I never felt uh, the resentment of of the male counterparts, except for the fact that they put us in Avery, which my understanding was that that was the much desired senior boys dorm. But they, and, and I believe the reason they did it was because it was the only senior boys dorm that was not connected by one of the lower faculty <laughs> housing to another dorm. So nice. I guess they thought that would make it easier for there to not to be extracurricular commingling. Um, well, they, were wrong. Good word. <laughs> they were wrong, but, uh, <laughs> but it, not, not for me, my <laughs> second story room that some of the guys climbed into to see their girlfriends. But anyway, um, sorry, was that too much to start with? <laughs> this is uh, the kind of night we're going to have. Um, but uh, anyway, so it was, it was a culture shock, but it was a great experience. That's fantastic. I definitely want to get into some of the um, uh, barriers you faced, but I, I want to quickly dig a little bit into the types of activities you were involved in and what you helped to start, given there was nothing. So um, let's start with Mary. I know we share okay. hockey, so. Okay, so yeah, there, there, were, there were pictures in that little photo montage. So when, um, when I went in the fall of 73, it was the first year that Petty was trying an interscholastic girls field hockey team. Mary Hodges, I see you here. You were on that team. And so <laughs> I, I'd never played field hockey, but you know, we were game. We were, yeah, I'm a joiner. I'm like, we need a team. And I was the starting goalie. Uh, so which, and I managed to survive the year without getting killed. Um, we were horrible. <laughs> 
but we compensated by trying to look tough. I looked at that one picture where I've got the headband here, we get the black stuff under our eyes. And honestly, and I told this story in our prep, this is before Title IX. So all of you alumni who had equal equipment and equal opportunities in the, in the female teams, we did not have that. We didn't have practice pads for me to practice in for field hockey. I had like the metal shoes and I had a mouth guard and I, and I had the hockey stick. The boys ice hockey team manager gave us an old pair of ice hockey pads that I cut the thick padding out and practiced. I tied them to my legs with rawhide strips. And when we played other teams, Mrs. Monahan and Mrs. Creedon asked the other coaches, do you have an extra pair of pads for our goalie to wear? Wow. So I was that, I was uh, the first, inter oh, and by the way, we, we were horrible. We won one game against Pennington, but we fought Blair on Blair Day to a 0-0 tie, and they had a 10-0 record coming into us. So rock on for us. And I was also on the very first interscholastic uh, girls softball team. I love that. How about you, Susan? Uh, well, you know, when we arrived in 19, when I arrived in 1970, again, there was really very little set up. As, as Heidi mentioned, we were, we were doing aerobics in the basement of Masters, synchronized swimming, which was really <laughs> silly. Um, and, uh, you know, we decided, I, with a few girls, decided we wanted to do a cheerleading uh, squad, which I think we did junior year. And also, you know, we went to the fabric store and bought the fabric and made the costumes ourselves and, you know, did it all ourselves. It wasn't like there was a lot of support at the school for it. We just, we just kind of did it. So um, I remember that. And um, I also remember that they were building this fabulous gym. And when they finished the gym, they really still had not accounted for us. And we were using, we had to use the visitor's locker room. So they had a, I think it was a $3 million gym, I think at the time. I forget what the cost of the gym was, but it was an expensive gym and still they hadn't, you know, it was such a late decision in June of 1970 that they decided to have uh, girls that they really ha weren't prepared for everything very, um, you know, early, early on, so. And Heidi, what were some of your... Oh. Yeah, um, so when we got there, there really wasn't much for us to do. But for some reason, they decided they needed cheerleaders for the first football game. And because we were seniors, they had the senior girls do it. Luckily, at that point, cheerleading was just clapping your hands and saying the cheer, because if you knew me, this would not have been a good mix. I think our <laughs> most sophisticated thing was we did a pyramid once, and we didn't fall, so that was good. Um, I know that girls were involved in the drama club, so there were um, a lot of musicals. Well, not a lot, but they put on, I think, Guys and Dolls that year. Can't remember if they did any others. So that was kind of a nice um, mix for the co-eds. Before that point, they had always had to kind of um, grab girls from town. Like my older sister was in some of the productions um, when she was around. So yeah, there wasn't a lot going on for us. Um, no real sports. Um, you know, we could join the other activities like the literary groups or the foreign language. But um, other than that, we were kind of on our own. Yeah. And when she, when Susan said about the bathrooms, I was trying to think, I think we only had a bathroom in Memorial Hall and one in Wilson Hall to use. So it was like you had to run across campus. <laughs> yeah, it's it's clear that you were you were treated uh, differently. But how how did that make you feel? Uh, what were some of the frustrations you faced, and how did you deal with that? How did you um, approach your safe haven? Where did you find those safe havens during that time? I'll direct you yeah. to, to Susan. Well, I'll just say we had a, we had a, they did set up a women's lounge in Memorial in the basement. We had our own room to go hang out in with our own lockers and that's where the bathroom was and whatever. So that was definitely our meeting up place and 
Um, I didn't feel, I never felt any frustration around it. it I felt, so, it, for me, it was such a privilege to go to, to Petty. Um, and I felt, if anything, special to go, you know, that we were, that we had this opportunity, that the timing was right, and I got to go. I mean, it was, it was quite extraordinary. And then, you know, as the time wore on, you got more and more involved in the programs and the and what was there, I, you know, I ended up being editor in chief of the yearbook. I worked on it from the beginning. I think it was just an interest of mine. But then by senior year, I was the editor in chief. And I think that led for me um, to even some career decisions that I made. Um, you know, editor in chief of the yearbook to Vogue magazine is not so surprising, really. You know, it was just, it, I really explored those passions when I was at Petty. So. How about you, Heidi? I think you were chiming in. I was. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think just we found um, comfort in each other. Like you'd see somebody coming across the campus that you you know you recognized as one of your friends, and that was good. Um, the lounge in the basement made me think of Dora Jean. Was it Dora Jean Wintner? She was. Yes, it was. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. She was the dean or whatever, kind of in charge of the females. And uh, the poor woman, I think, was a nervous wreck that we were going to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true, Heidi. <laughs> fall by the wayside. She was always talking about being ladies. Um, I think she made comments about hem lanes. Um, yeah, it was, it, she was a little, I hope she's not, she wouldn't be a, hmm. She was a little old fashioned in her thinking even for then. So it, that was always kind of more of a challenge than probably any of the other things on campus was just trying to keep her happy, but still be a senior in high school kind of thing. Yeah, and Mary, anything to add there? It sounds like a cheery experience so far. Uh, you know, I, I just, I think at that point, because we're, we lived there also. Mm -hmm. So our experience was different. We, we had our dorm. Um, I think it, at, at some point, too, there was probably, um, I don't know, maybe some of the protective instincts of some of the guys with it. Um, I, I do remember uh, Mrs. Whitner and, and very high protocol standards. I don't know if there is still a strict dress code, but uh, for that year, it was, we could wear slacks. I think we were the original pantsuit nation, um, that we could wear <laughs> pantsuits to classes, but dinner, Monday through Thursday nights, it was skirts or dresses, mm -hmm. and also Sunday brunch, and of course, never jeans. So there were certain, um, there were some pretty strict protocols, I think, for, uh, for appropriate behavior, um, in, in that respect, doesn't, I, I'm not even going to say any more than that, but it was, but I, I didn't, you know, because we had, it, you know, it was also our home. So I think the experience might have been a little bit of, uh, different there that, that we always had our space. I think that's, uh, I think that's fair. Um, you, you all sort of hinted at that sort of camaraderie you had among yourselves. Um, obviously, roles and expectations of women has changed dramatically. Um, but I get the sense that looking back on your time at Petty, nothing's really changed about your thoughts of your overall experience. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's fair. I, I mean, I identify much more strongly with my Petty experience than I do with my college. Mm -hmm. uh, some of that is I'll, I'll own. It's because I turned 18 and I was you know, 15 minutes from Asbury Park in the rock and roll clubs. So <laughs> yeah, I'll own that. Um, but I, I, and I will tell you that in, in the last 10 years, to be thrilled to have reconnected with so many of my classmates through social media. I mean, I, I love that. And, and I think I'm a lot more cool at 63 than I was at 16. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a lot more fun and a lot more mature to hang around. So um, I, I was sort of awkward and not very, like, I wasn't one of the cool kids at Petty. I somehow don't believe that, Mary, but I'll, no. I'll let you <laughs> make that claim right here. I wasn't. 
Heidi, were you going to say something? No, <laughs> no, I, 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 when you were talking about frustrations or challenges, I think one of the challenges that I faced was just all of my teachers were like neighbors and friends. I babysat their kids. They lived next door. So I knew I had to be on all the time, like in high school where I had been going, I could kind of float more. And at Putty, I knew that everything was going to kind of be right up front. So that put a little bit of pressure, but it wasn't a bad pressure. It was probably a pressure that I needed. It's kind of the kick in the butt. Um, so that was really the only thing that I found that challenging. Well, except for Harry Holcomb, when he made me, we were in a speech class or something, and he made me get on the stage and scream back to the class because he thought I was too, um, I don't know what he thought I was, but he wanted me to just scream. And it was like, okay, this would be my idea of hell. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you find yourself using that screaming method in your, um, in your career sense? Uh, it it kind of comes naturally to me now. He would be very <laughs> proud of me. <laughs> How have, uh, have uh, 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 instructors um, really touched the, um, the rest of you, Susan? Any uh, stories about any professor, uh, teachers in particular that really stood out and really sh helped to shape who you are today? Well, it was certainly interesting, you know, being uh, not only, for the most part, the only girl in your class, but also being taught by a male teacher. So, I, you know, I took biology with 15 other boys and a male teacher, you know, so then when they got to the reproductive system, and, you know, all eyes kind of went to me, like, where's all that stuff hiding? Um, uh, but I am proud of the fact that my lab partner, Rudy Andriani, became a doctor. So I figured the fact that I let him cut up the frog was probably, you know, good, good news for him. Um, and then I told that story, I, I, which was already in the Chronicle about Mr. Ogden and my silly faux pas in algebra class, um, where I called a circle a circumcised circle instead of circumscribed circle. And, um, you know, so there were a few of those along the way. But, um, you know, for the most part, I really think that the, for the most part, the teachers and the students, the, the boys, um, because, you know, as we say, we're women at Petty. The fact of the matter is we were girls. We, I was 14 years old when I went to Petty. So uh, we weren't exactly women yet. And um, for the most part, the boys were, were really welcoming and, um, and kind. I can't remember really an instance where anyone was unkind. So I want to say that because, oh you know, it doesn't it doesn't it, it's an it was such an odd experience for them as well you know do you remember tony damiano i Susan? do yeah. he um was one um boy that kind of took us all under his wing he was like kind of the the buffer between the females and the males of the school and whenever there was an issue we would just go to tony tony <laughs> yeah well, i mean and also we had the canteen which was such a wonderful place to hang out and socialize. I love that Long Street Hall building. So that was fun. Okay. Yeah. Anything you want to add, Mary? I was just think I was thinking of some teachers and I and I pulled out my yearbook before shortly before coming on here and um Harry Holcomb, big big influence. Um, yeah. you know, being involved in drama club and a couple of plays and and I talked about and I remembered when we were preparing for this, that the very first press release I ever wrote was for Harry for, to advertise a petty school play. And, and that basically became like the, you know, the, I mean, I can't tell you how many thousands I've probably written over the last, you know, 40 years. Um, with English being my, my concentration, um, I, gosh, I wish somebody was in touch with either Ms., with the Ted Haney or Dennis Hartzell. My senior year, they were enormous influences. 
not only in, in studies, but also just in kind of life advice um, and, and things like that. And uh, may he rest in peace, John Scott. Um, I had him for a creative writing class and it's interesting because I don't write poetry now and I, and I don't think I was particularly great at poetry back then, but I, I wrote something and he saw something in it. And he wrote on my, my last class project that he'd like to work with me some more because I undoubtedly would want to try and work toward publication. And it was the first time that, any, that anybody, any teacher or anything had ever said that to me. Yeah. So that is, you know, that one comment can do in enormous things for, um, for a student and the student's self-confidence. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget that. I, I definitely share um, that type of instructor experience um, for me as well. And he happened to be a male. Um, I wanted to jump uh, in as I'm looking at the time on, on really questions about uh, leadership and gender equality. Over the past year especially, um, Petty has really gotten um, deeper into um, our discourse around gender. This type of event is the first of many, just acknowledging that Petty women are awesome and we, we need more spaces like this. Um, how have your experiences and challenges um, in your years at Petty really shaped the way you view diversity um, how have you embodied it sort of in your uh, experience in your career and how have you helped other women, um, diverse women in particular, um, through your journey? I'll start with Mary. Wow. You know, I have to say that for all that, you know, Petty might have had the rep, I mean, prep school and, and being privileged or, or an economic privilege and things like that, we still had diverse backgrounds. And, uh, and I have to say that I, I didn't encounter at, at Petty a lot of um, what I would say student snobbery. You know, if, if their parents could have been the CEO of a, a multi-billion dollar corporation or, um, or someone could have been there on, on scholarship and you didn't have, you didn't have that, that such that, cultural, um, any kind of cultural snobbery, which is the way that I was brought up. So be able to, to be able to experience that in what really is, I mean, come on, 500 students in a, in a top academic, I'm sorry, academic school, that, that is a privilege, no matter how we got there, it was a privilege. So um, I think I've carried it with me that, that we, to meet people on the, on the space where they are and where they come from. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter gender identification, gender equality, economic background, soci societal background. Um, you know, we, we have a common ground somewhere and you find that common mission. You know, I, I work at a place where, you know, we, we have an overriding united. So what unites us? Not to purposely quote the Dan Rather book, but yeah. And that's what I try and find is, is what is the intent and what unites us. Thank you for that. Heidi, how about you? How, how, how has that experience really um, helped you in, in, with diversity? I think for me personally, it made me a lot more assertive and a lot more um, aware of when I saw situations where other people were not given the credit for their abilities. Um, and so there's a stubborn side of me that would make me want to kind of fight for that. Um, being a teacher, particularly in eighth grade, it used to always bother me because a lot of the females at that age don't want to be the good students anymore. And we're particularly falling behind in, in STEM areas. And so to kind of get them excited about being as much as they could be and not be worried about how that looked to the males in the class. They didn't want to be brighter than they were. So that was always a challenge. So just kind of pushing females along so that they didn't see themselves as being people that couldn't achieve whatever they were out there to achieve. And I think Patty really put that in me was um, 
we did have that feeling that there were those who resented us being there. So there was that initial challenge to really show it to them. And I think we did. Um, <laughs> and that just kind of stayed with me. You know, if you can survive a year with three females in your class and, and succeed and uh, excel, then I think you're going to be okay in just about anywhere. And you, Susan, anything to add? Especially, I would just say, um, you know, rather than going to the high school that I went to, which the high school that I was going to go to, which was in my local community, and instead going to Petty, uh, Petty offered um, the students there were from all over, of course, even internationally. So I think I learned uh, and, and became open to everyone having a story and also a talent. Uh, they all, you know, usually people have some sort of talent or some unique story um, that if you, you know, sit down and try to relate with them, they, they're going to share that with you and you're going to be a better person for it. So I think that that's, Petty was more of an international and um, geographically more diverse uh, group of students than I, than I would have had just staying at my high school. So that was the first time that, that I'd experienced that. It's true. My second year roommate was from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had Hong Kong exchange students, or not exchange Kim, students, but students from Hong Kong. I don't know. Heidi, you remember Kim Red Earth, Han? Do you remember Kim? Heidi? Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Do you remember Kim? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, his experience and his story, it was quite extraordinary. And, and learning that, I wouldn't have had that exposure had I been at um, my local high school, you know. Yeah. So. I think a number of us on this call can agree that Petty did open our eyes to um, a lot of difference. Um, and mm -hmm. hopefully we're taking that difference and really applying it in our day to days and, and, and giving back and reaching back. Um, one final question before we open it up to Q&A. Um, you, how do you feel about being um, a, a petty female role model? What does it mean to be an inspiration and what advice would you give the uh, women uh, uh, on today's uh, uh, video chat? Yikes. <laughs> well, that's begging the question of our, how inspirational are we? So, To be the first anything takes a little bit of courage, I have to admit. So, I don't know. Looking at the um, Petty Chronicles, I do not feel like I represent the inspiration. I mean, when I see what all these females are doing and excelling at, I think the credit goes to those young women. I think to, to some, you know, in the leadership program that I was in, we always joke and say that every class is the best class ever. And the reason that that's a running joke and every new class of, that comes through the leadership says it is because we try and build on the shoulders of, of the people who came before us. So if, if I've learned anything, it's that you can put yourself or you can be put in the most, the oddest situation that maybe you didn't expect to go to and the path. Um, and it's your responsibility to take that opportunity and take from it what you need and, and go forward um, and not squander it. But I would say that for any opportunity. So for, for all of us that are on this chat, we, we didn't squander that opportunity and we've used it to build on. And if that is a, is a valuable lesson for the students that are you know, starting or, or this is their first year, but I think that's a good lesson for any, in any situation. So if I can take that from Petty and apply it to any other situation is, um, that's what I would kind of counsel. I love that, that's great. I know Susan, you spent a little bit of time as you were uh, closing out the Chronicle and you wrote a poem. I would love for you to be able to share before we start to lose people before the Q&A, your poem that was inspired by the Chronicle article. Okay, you want me to do it now then? I would love okay. that. All right. So I wrote this when I, after they uh, asked me some questions about the Chronicle, I just, uh, I'm always writing something. So here we go. It's called, I Was There. <clears throat> 
The grass was green in the square. I know, I was there. Invited to break tradition, Alaviva, Alaviva. They pushed back and embraced. It was a confusing time, but we knew our place. It was here. I know, I was there. Girls to the rescue. Few in numbers, still we did create a stir, an awakening of sorts. They noticed the change. We knew the opportunity. Petty will never be the same. It will bloom in new soil, a glory it would have never had without us. I know, I was there. There were always doubters, but we proved them wrong quickly. It was obvious. Petty wanted the day and the night, the moon and the stars. I know, I was there. I don't know a better way to open up Q&A than that, um, just to exhibit your talent for all of us. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Um, if anyone has any questions, now is the time. I think we lost Susan. Actually, you lost me? Oh, she, she moved over. Okay, I see you there. You got me? Yeah. Question? question? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I'm not sure who's speaking, but go on, go on. This is, this is Therese DiLorenzo, and I'd like to address Susan Armenti. Uh, Susan, if it wasn't for you, I would not have wound up at Petty. Wow. Because, oh, are you still there? I'm here. Are you losing me? Yes, yes. Hi. So, so my, our, our fathers were friends from mm -hmm. Trenton, New Jersey. And because Susan went to Petty, it, my sister and I got to go to Petty. And Petty really changed my life very much for the best. So mm -hmm. thank you, Susan. I loved your parents. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. You too. Representation matters. That's what that tells me. That's awesome. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? I, I don't have a question. I also have a statement. Um, I'll turn on my camera briefly, but my house is crazy. Hold on. Sorry. You would think with nine months in, in isolation, I would be better at this. Um, <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> oh, and I, and I keep tape over my camera. Okay. <laughs> Hi, and sorry for whatever is being in the background. Um, so Siobhan, you did a wonderful job, an excellent job uh, moderating this. Um, to the panelists, thank you so much for sharing your stories, um, because I think even though there's a, a gap, let's say, in the time frames that we went to Petty, I think a lot of the stories um, that you told resonate with all of us because we were there. And Susan, that poem is like so fitting and so perfect. Mm -hmm. My comment really is just thank you guys, because like with any new challenge or change um, with anything, a new experience, there has to be kind of trailblazers. And I feel like you women were the trailblazers for us, right? Um, the, the ease with which we were at Petty or the convenience, we didn't think anything of being women at Petty or girls at Petty at the time, because 50 years, you know, 50 years ago, there were a few women who were brave enough to, to mark the path for us. So thank you. This was great. This was such a great, wonderful experience. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Love you, Dara. <laughs> Love you too. Do it so awesome. It's so I, had a, I had a question for you. This is Trisha Robles. And um, are you going to share these, uh, this video or these documents, these statements from the women for to the women that are there right now? Because I think it's important for them to hear um, what came before them. I think Petty is running the show on what's going to be shared or not, but we thought uh, recording it was going to be a big deal. So my guess is yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I do think that that's, um, yeah, I think it's important. And I think Ms. Seltzer um, is off, but uh, I was in the class of 1989 when um, she was our head mistress and, uh, and Mr. Potter died. And Tappan Potter, who is one of my very best friends to this day, I mean, there's not a week that doesn't go by that I don't speak to her or Michaela or Mandy mm -hmm. or Kim or any of them. I mean, those high school friends I made I mean, I'm 50 years old and I still speak to them. And my very first friend at Petty is actually on the call. Her name is Neon B. Harris. And uh, 
she was at my wedding and uh, she was my very first friend. I was a kid that came from Saudi Arabia and uh, Niambi was a local day student and we went to soccer preseason together and um, I couldn't believe Petty didn't have air conditioning. I mean, what is that? That's crazy. <laughs> so we, uh, I remember Niambi and I would run back to my dorm and shower and just lay on the floor in Avery with every fan I owned blowing on us because we were so darn hot. So anyway, I, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very special that Niambi's on here that we were experienced our very first day together. And thank you, Miss Seltzer. Thank you for uh, all that Trish, you did for I us. remember all of you so well. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Zaya is here. Yeah. Hi, Zaya. <laughs> Trisha was my exotic foreign exchange student. Yes, I, yes. Oh, you're from where? Yes. No one knew where Saudi Arabia was on the map. They were like, wait, you're Mexican, you're from Texas, and you live in Saudi Arabia? How does that work? <laughs> I'm like, it's crazy. My dad works for this company called Exxon. It's just really weird. So, yeah. Okay. Thank oh you God. for that. <laughs> I see so many, like, I, I, I see faces, of course, that I recognize, but I also see people, like, that have their names hyphenated. And there was someone, I just lost her. So, so Sarah Maslin dash, that is, is Scooter Maslin your dad? Yep, he's my dad. Um, and he was mm -hmm. class of 1974. So mm -hmm. his first year at Petty was the first year that women arrived. He, and he was a student body president, I believe. Yep, yeah, he was. So, so names, and I thought I saw a Mucharon on another panel, and I just say that because we had a couple South Jersey students that used to, our parents used to carpool us up to go on there and stuff. But I want to say thank you all for showing up because <laughs> it was an honor to be asked to be part of this. And, uh, and it's just, thank you for being here, everybody. So, so Sarah, um, uh, my name's Denise, your dad was the male student who was part of the cheerleading squad you know, and he was the one who asked me pleaded with me to join the cheerleaders which I had no interest in doing and of course my mother was like like in you know her growing up like to be a cheerleader that would be like everything so anyway yeah he's a, a man of many talents so yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask Sarah if she knew that fact she can take that back to him <laughs> yeah oh yeah well I texted him earlier told him I was on this so he's definitely gonna want the rundown afterwards so I'll let him know that that was brought up <laughs> how do we talk oh no, you're talking, Debbie. Oh, Hi. I am. I just wanted to also, when you say connections, because two of my dear friends, we're all like, are you going to be on? I don't know. Are you? And it's Denise, <laughs> sure who I still you. see, and Joanne. Hi. Um, so we've stayed in touch all the, you know. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Yeah, and nice stuff. to see you. Oh, it's nice I didn't see you Joanne Hello. before. Uh, and yeah. Dory Street Bye. snuck in. Yeah. And Sarah, you could tell your dad, Debbie Martin, was on because we were in the two-person play, and he still talks about it, and so do I. So <laughs> Got it. let him know. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. And he was in Our Town, too, I think. I think that was one of the plays. So, yeah. We had a lot of memories of Scooter. We were all in Our Town. <laughs> and we were all class of 75, Denise and I, and Mary and Mary. So. 74. Very nice. Awesome. And, and Joanne, awesome. so. Well, it's, it's wonderful to meet all of you. You guys are all such an inspiration. That's <laughs> exactly what um, Petty was thinking about. I think um, we had gone through m m many, many iterations of ideas of trying to bring women together. Um, Petty does a lot of great things um, and things well, and we felt like we can do better by our alumni. And just hearing all of these stories and these connections is really making me warm <laughs> inside mm -hmm. and gives me, um, you know, I'm encouraged that we have um, demand for more and more interactions like this. I think we can do better to um, support one another, help each other, stay in touch. The stories and the depth of experience here is just invaluable. So I, I wanna personally thank you all for being here and sharing of yourselves. Um, not just the panel, but everyone in the audience. Is anybody on from the class of 2017? I don't know. I just, I had said this to some, and the alumni office will know that, that I have a, uh, I'm in touch with a, a young alumna named Robin Okinawa. I, I always, I'm, it's late. I said her last <laughs> name wrong. 
But uh, I remember meeting her when she had just decided that she was going to Petty. I had gone through a leadership program with her aunt and uh, she did great things at Petty. She's doing great things in her um, in university. And she's actually coming back to speak to, I think, the history club about her capstone project. But all I could think of was like, look, look at the caliber of, of student, of, of accomplished young person that Petty continues to put out after how many years. Um, Robin is going to do, she's doing great things. She's going to do more great things. So all of you who are, who are still either teaching or on uh, administration, on, on faculty, you too have carried the women of Petty forward. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it makes this older alumna very proud. <laughs> Anyone I else? love hearing Mary's story about the, I'm a field, I was a field hockey player at Petty. And I, I was too, field yes. Field, and I just, Blair Day was just the biggest. And your story, I would have loved to have watched that game with you. I bet you guys just played your hearts out and it just touches me. I just get so tickled because um, I know you guys were just gritty and you know, we're gonna, you gave it your all that day and it, you know, it paid back in spades, I guess, because you you really came around with an amazing accomplishment with a zero zero against Blair. That's crazy. Mrs. Creed and Mrs. Monahan didn't tell us they had a 10 and 0 record coming in. I found out because Petty, uh, Blair players' parents made sure to tell me before we took the field that we were going up against an undefeated team. And, and I remember going to Mrs. Creed and Mrs. Monty and going, oh my God, they're undefeated. They're like, don't say a word. <laughs> I was like, okay. Because I mean, they did it to psych us out. But yeah, it, you know, it was a proud moment. And you want to talk about a bonding moment with, with our male counterparts that, that the women's team did, did a solid that, you know, and no padding. I'm <laughs> sorry? Virtually no padding. That that part, it trips me out. As also a goalie, I can't imagine. Mine were much my, my, my mother years came, later. I'm sorry. My mother came to watch a game, and I finally had to tell her about a quarter in. I said, Mom, I love you, but you have to go out of my hearing, because if you keep gasping every <laughs> time they take a shot on goal, you're going to get me killed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to add, sports were a huge part of my life with Petty, and I would not have gotten to play at Heightstown High School, but the people I keep in touch with and who are on this call are all my field hockey buddies or my basketball friends, and it, it, it was an opportunity I wouldn't have had elsewhere. So, Thank you. Bonding. Agreed. Just to but the pads were much better okay. four years later, I have to say. I got stuck in the oh, goal, yeah. too. I, I had a bone bruise on my toe, like, all through college. Wow. Becky, why isn't your camera on? Because I have sweats on. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all have? Don't we all have sweats on? <laughs> Becky, if, if that makes you feel any better, I put on a real sweater, but I still have my Pilates pants on. Yeah, <laughs> Becky's my sister, so I have to give her grief. <laughs> so. You have our permission. Just to chime in, I, uh, I know we mentioned uh, theater. You know, in our big high schools, it's really hard to uh, get personalized attention in specialty areas, sports included. Um, but art was, a I never realized I had any talent at all in, in art. You're thrown in a group uh, in a big high school and you all do the same kinds of things. But um, that ended up being something that um, kind of continued in my life too and was recognized for certain pieces. So uh, very shocking. Uh, as well as theater, um, never even would have considered getting on stage and being a, a singer and a, a lead role there or whatever. And um, so uh, it built confidence and uh, some character. And, uh, you know, then I became a school principal. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it, was, it was a great experience. And I was part of that uh, first boarding group too, 73 to 75. I mean, that's you're an awesome Mary in the librarian in music. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's a great point, Mary. Um, this is Tree speaking. 
to have the art studio at your you know beck and call whenever you wanted to go there was just such a gift you know you don't have that at your local high school and you know petty really did they taught um the other thing they taught really well was was writing you know you really knew how to write when you left petty mm -hmm. and i went into publishing i married my love of art and my love of creative writing and went into publishing i mean it was it was great, but we had some great art teachers. So I agree with you, Mary. It was a great gift to have that uh, focus on the arts. I have to agree with you all. Um, it, it Petty took uh, coal for some of us and made us into diamonds. It really just took very raw talent and etched us and molded, molded us and brought out the very best. I never felt, at least in my experience, you know, pressure to do any one thing. I could do all things. Um, and I, I'm sure a lot of folks on the line um, would agree that you were able to tap into anything you wanted to be while at Petty. Um, I happen to be a creative person. I, I ended up in finance, don't ask. Um, but that's what Petty was. It, it, it touched on every aspect of, of who you are and really brought that out. And I'm getting that sense tonight as we close out. Um, it is nine o'clock. This is fantastic and has been fantastic. Uh, Wendy wrote in the chat that we will have more of these. So stay tuned. This energy, hold on to it and bottle it up for the next time because we definitely feel the need for more of this. Any parting words from the panelists before we close out and say goodbye? Alaviva. Alaviva. <laughs> I, are we singing well, tonight? Are we doing this? <laughs> I'd like to say, I'd like to say something if I could. Sure. I had a, um, I spoke to Kathy about an idea about there being some sort of physical representation of co-education at Petty. So I hope maybe in the future, well, there, there could be something like a, a bench with a monument or a sculpture or a something. I'm not sure what, but I really hope that after 50 years, there could be something physical on the campus that could represent the, the change and something that when co-eds go back to or, or go back to Petty and have a take, take a look around, they can see something that marked when things changed at Petty. So I'm just going to put that out there since everyone's on the call. Who knows yeah, the next, the next, the next envelope I receive, let that be a box that I can That's check where I want my money wow. to go. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll get behind that. that. Okay. Thank you. Make Here your voices heard and uh, maybe we can make it happen. Absolutely. So, so um, I don't know if you saw, but somebody suggested a framed piece of poetry. <laughs> well, the last yeah, time Susan that. suggested something, it got done. So we will, we will put a pin in that. Um, I want to thank everyone on behalf of Petty, on a, a half of uh, behalf of my class, 1999. On um, behalf of all the women on tonight's call, thank you, thank you, thank you, pioneers. Uh, we wish you a good night. You did a wonderful night, job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Thank you, Siobhan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mary. I think it went well. Phenomenal. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Idara is still on. Siobhan, I just I just wrote you something. Call me. Okay. <laughs> I can't see it. I can't see it. No, not here. It's on um, Messenger on Facebook. Okay. Sorry. Great job. Thank you. Now I'm leaving. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, you guys were terrific. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.